morning and good morning to you. Now, the past few days, we've seen the three key security arms of government uh, all absolving themselves from responsibility for the violence we saw in the past week with the state security minister, Anda Jodlo, on the one hand, saying that they did their part, they collected the necessary intelligence and dispensed it to the police, with the police minister, Pegitkala, saying he doesn't know what he's talking about. So it's now a vicious finger-pointing exercise and an unnecessary one at that. So what are the dangers of government departments, particularly law enforcement agencies, not sharing intelligence information? Well, the dangers are pretty obvious. What we've seen over, so I'm just going to turn my volume down here. Yeah. Um, the dangers are pretty obvious. We've seen over the last uh, 10 days, the direct results are the lack of intelligence. Um, I would say that uh, we're, we're actually speaking to the wrong people. The ministers are such very rarely know what's going on and have a political motive. The people, the correct people to be speaking to are the officers on the ground, senior police officers who have got political agendas, uh, the military officers who, again, we hope they have political agendas, although, to be fair, whenever there's a, a government coup in most countries, it is led by the military. Um, but I'd, I'd like to give you an, an example that uh, shows that it's not a current problem. If you look back to the uh, late 1970s, the uh, Seychelles coup, which was orchestrated by uh, the South African government, uh, directly under the orders of uh, then uh, uh, Prime Minister, uh, was destroyed by the fact that uh, the SAP security branch were working against the plotters, and national intelligence were working, well, the boss, as it was in those days, were working for the coup plotters on behalf of the, uh, the Seychelles uh, president in waiting. And it was the, the fight between those two that actually stopped you from going ahead. So it's not a new phenomenon. Now, Andy, I'm going to take you back to the, uh, you know, to the United States September 11 attacks as a case in point uh, with the FBI ostensibly having had information and did not share it with CIA and vice versa. Now, now that this working in silos of the law enforcement agencies is out in the open, so how easy would it be for unscrupulous groups domestically and internationally to take advantage of the situation? Well, if we take the American situation we brought up, uh, you're quite correct. Uh, in the United States, at the time of the 9-11 attacks, there were 16 different national intelligence agencies. Um, I'm not counting uh, state and uh, regional uh, intelligence agencies, whether they be police, military, uh, or other government-related functions. The 9-11 attacks resulted in Homeland Security being formed to hopefully uh, avoid the problem of the, the silo phenomena that we're talking about. Uh, the United Kingdom did exactly the same thing um, during the uh, 1970s and 80s attack by the PLO and the IRA. They Cobra, which is the cabinet of the issue groups. And um, they struck uh, nationwide all of these sources. People think that the UK police just have one force. No, they all have a regional county forces. And they were also uncovered. Cobra was set up to to deal with that. And the problem with the silo phenomenon is exactly the description of the term. In a brain silo, you can have a, a, a disease in one silo of the brain, and the next silo to it can be free of the disease. Mm. Sylvester Stallone said he was fighting criminals in uh, one of his movies, you are a disease. And we can certainly hope, uh, Andy, that other government departments can actually learn a lesson from this. I mean, these other departments have learned a hard way of why it is important to share intelligence between law enforcement agencies. So could you perhaps give us some examples of those? Uh, well, I think I've pre question that by already giving you some. But um, um, on, the, on the local scale, I think that what's happened in Swaziland should be warning to us, uh, when you look at the uh, reaction of some of the political parties, I don't think I have to make a name, name that, um, supporting the insurrection of Swaziland against the king, uh, and even going as far as marching to uh, border posts to uh, uh, create problems for the uh, existing status quo in Swaziland, and at the same time threatening to do the same thing in South Africa, and then with another political party, Apparently, literally a few days later, 
to follow the spicy example of having a look. Let's talk about the modus operandi of the state security agencies. Uh, do they attempt to collect information to meet the needs of any government official? I mean, is there perhaps a mechanism in place to confirm that the need does indeed exist for such intelligence? Well, we do have a state intelligence ombudsman who is supposed to be independent. Um, we know from recent revelations at Cadessa a couple of months ago that the state security agency had lost their focus. They were not protecting South Africa. They were protecting particular internal political interests. And that is not their, their function. You can't even say it's not their core function. At no level is it function to protect political parties. It is their level to protect uh, the entire nation independently. So where the state uh, security uh, intelligence ombudsman has been in all of this, I do not know. But, Andy, do these intelligence agencies collect information regardless of their potential political cost? Um, my, my impression over the last uh, couple of months has been that the collection of intelligence has been very selective. We know that there are uh, police officers and from the SSA who have been uh, investigated in two cases, prosecuted for using intelligence collections such as cell phone interception for political reasons. They should have been using those facilities uh, to protect the country, not to protect whichever politician in their pockets. And what if they know in advance that uh, what they can collect uh, in terms of the in intelligence information could be of marginal value juxtaposed to what could be obtained from public sources? Uh, well, I hate to say it, but we haven't had a professional uh, intelligence service, not at the top anyway. Uh, you'll see recently uh, Robert McBride has been suspended because of activities in, in Mozambique. Mm. And mm. Uh, I, I've read a very informative article just uh, this morning and uh, conversed with some friends yesterday who are involved directly in Mozambique, saying that the Mozambican government applauded the efforts of the state security agency the covert intelligence protection against what's going on in Cabo Delgado. But then the whole thing was distorted because commercial interests put in, rather than uh, really protect the interests of the two countries involved. I know that politics uh, is always thrust into any government operation. Say, for instance, uh, security agencies uh, do indeed collect information that may adversely affect uh, what uh, foreign allies, uh, for, as a case in point. So should that be a consideration, though? Should, uh, should the governments continue uh, to allow security agencies to start sifting through information, whether they, uh, whether they are for or against any foreign ally? <laughs> well, the perception that intelligence agencies are all about James Bond-type activities of us fighting uh, uh, the, the bad guys is a correct perception. That's a small percentage of the work which is done by intelligence agents. A lot of it is as simple as looking at uh, the weather, the uh -huh. risks to uh, crop uh, production and food security. Uh, if you take, for instance, the French government, they are quite open about the fact that they use their intelligence agencies to collect commercial information because they say it's in their interest to uh, strengthen their economy and to protect their economy. Uh, there are a number of governments that quite openly. If the government have a policy of doing that openly, then they should just say so, and um, they won't be um, surprised and we won't be criticizing. All right, Andy, great chatting to you. Thank you so much uh, for your time. You're very welcome. That is security analyst and consultant, Andy Grunko.